and welcome to Action Film Institute. I'm your host, Robert Barnwell. During the last episode, we learned how to watch and study our favorite action films. Today I'll share with you some of my thoughts on what should be included in every independent action filmmaker's reference library. My first recommendation is the DV Rebels Guide, an all-digital approach to making killer action movies on the cheap by Stu Moschwitz. In my opinion, this is the single most accessible book on action filmmaking ever written. And by accessible, I mean ease of understanding and ease of reading. It's specifically for newcomers to filmmaking. However, it provides a great overview of the process. By way of background, Stu spent five years at George Lucas's Industrial Light and Magic as a visual effects artist before going out on his own as a commercial director. The second book I'd suggest is From Real to Deal, Everything You Need to Create a Successful Independent Film by Dov Siemens. Dov is perhaps the nation's leading film instructor. Consider a list of some of his students, Quentin Tarantino, Will Smith, and Guy Ritchie. This book provides a great overview of the independent film process. Number three is First Time Director, How to Make Your Breakthrough Movie by Gil Bettman. This book, while still quite accessible, is slightly more advanced than Stu Moschwitz's The DV Rebels Guide and focuses primarily on production, including cinematography and issues around lens selection. This is one of my favorites. The fourth is Film Directing Fundamentals, See Your Film Before Shooting by Nicholas Proferis, which provides both depth and breadth across a spectrum of directorial skills but I'd say it really shines in its coverage of storyboarding as well as actor and camera blocking. Number five, I'd suggest that you pick up one or two books on cinematography and camera technique. My two favorites are Master Shots, 100 Advanced Camera Techniques to Get an Expensive Look on Your Low Budget Movie by Christopher Kenworthy, and Master Shots Volume 2, 100 Ways to Shoot Great Dialogue Scenes, also by Christopher Kenworthy. By the way, the latest version, Volume 3, is scheduled for release shortly, so I'd suggest keeping your eyes out for that one as well. Number six is the Location Sound Bible, How to Record Professional Dialogue for Film and TV by Rick Veers. It's almost universally acknowledged, and I believe I mentioned it in a previous episode, even by DPs, that a movie with bad visuals and good sound is more appealing to audiences than a movie with great visuals and crap sound. And I completely agree with this. Rick provides a great overview of location audio in a writing style that is easily understood by those of us without a degree in audio engineering. If you can think of a better book, please let me know. But again, I'm a big fan of the Location Sound Bible as well as Rick's other book, The Sound Effects Bible, How to Create and Record Hollywood Style Sound Effects. Number seven is Save the Cat the last book on screenwriting that you'll ever need by Blake Snyder. I'd like to send my condolences to Blake's family. Blake passed away a few short years ago while he was still relatively young. I think off the top of my head he was only in his 40s or 50s. However, before he did die, Blake shared with us some really amazing screenwriting insights within his first book, Save the Cat, and his several successful Save the Cat series of follow-up books, including Save the Cat Strikes Back, and Save the Cat Goes to the Movies. If you're interested in screenwriting, and I suggest that you should be, you may also want to check out Sid Field's book, Screenplay, The Foundations of Screenwriting. Number eight, I'd suggest getting the shooting script from a minimum of three of your favorite movies within your preferred genre of action films. The shooting script is the final version of the script from which the director and DP shot the film. Having a copy of the shooting script when watching and studying a movie is really enlightening. Again, try to pick up at least three. Number nine is directing actors, creating memorable performances for film and television by Judith Weston. As with any profession, acting has its own techniques and language. In order to maximize the performance of the actors and the quality of the resulting film, Every director should learn how actors work and how to communicate with them in a language that they understand. Finally, number 10, a copy of your owner's manual or a filmmaker's guide to your specific video camera. I've saved the most obvious for last. Fortunately, you probably received a copy of this book for free when you purchased your camera, or you can find it in PDF format available for free 
by downloading it online. Regardless, if you haven't done it already, you should take a few hours and familiarize yourself with your camera, its features, and its various menu options. Be sure to keep this close to your camera or pack securely in your camera bag. You'll notice that these recommendations all focus on the art and science of filmmaking. However, books focused exclusively on filmmaking comprise only half of my personal reference library. The other half of my library includes books related to my characters and the world in which they live. These books include subjects such as military tactics, combat handgun, knife fighting and hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques, as well as books on various geopolitical and foreign affairs issues. I think it's critically important to understand my characters and the environment in which they live and breathe. Also keep in mind that your characters won't all share your own beliefs or ideals. Many, although not all filmmakers, are artists who often lean a little to the left in their political ideologies. However, action film characters, particularly if they're characters from law enforcement or the military, are likely to lean a little further to the right. Politics may or may not come into play with regard to your films and movies, but you really should have a clear understanding of who your characters are and where they're coming from. As a result, again, I suggest that you follow my lead and include books in your reference library that are character and plot driven rather than completely focused on the art and the science of filmmaking. Join us for the next episode when we talk about several ways you can improve your filmmaking for under $150. In the meantime, check out all the free articles, reviews, and videos available at actionfilminstitute.com. Also, if you have any topics that you'd like to see us cover, or maybe you'd like to let us know how we're doing, just leave us some quick YouTube feedback. Finally, we'd like to invite you to take a second to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.